State your name. Bored. What do you do? Try to play drums. Are Americans as arrogant and obnoxious as you thought they were? Uh, one more time, sorry. Are Americans as arrogant and obnoxious as you thought they were? Um, uh, worse. The oh, fuck. <laughs> Are you actually being serious? Were they worse? Uh, to say it very carefully, when I'm done touring the U.S. for five weeks, um, yeah, I, I don't miss <laughs> you <and> they, <laughs> the next uh, four weeks. No, no worries, man. No worries. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm used yeah, to don't it. Take it personally. Don't don't take it personally. It's not nothing I, about you. I do not take it personally at all. Trust me, like, I've. I've seen enough of different culture via the internet to know that we are definitely different. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. You're a one of a kind. <laughs> but okay, since since we're talking about the tour through the U.S., I did get to see you guys in Nashville, which was awesome. I got to see you guys playing with Haken. Um, did you get a chance to to go around town at all? Were you guys kind of on a stri strict schedule? Uh, it was a pretty strict schedule at the Haken tour, but uh, six months before when we toured with Between the Buried and Me and the Deer Hunter, um, we went out to see all the crazy Nashville bars, and that was awesome to see uh, nice. live band on every single uh, pub or restaurant in the. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That's... I have to admit that, even though it was the US. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually it's one of the reasons why I love this town, man. Is because there's music yeah. like everywhere. It's so cool. Did you get a chance? Also, oh, go ahead. Sorry. And it's also uh, Pearl Drums. The drums I've been playing and been endorsed by for six, seven years. Uh, headquarters. So I gotta love this town. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You have no choice now. <laughs> but um, did you get a chance to try any barbecue while you're in the south? Ah, uh, let me remember. Yeah, in the south, uh, I had a. Awesome barbecue in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. If that nice. is South, yeah, but that's not the uh, U.S. Um, I oh, don't yeah, remember. No, I, think, I think Sao Paulo is. Uh, I think it's a different country. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> but uh, to be honest, I don't remember if I ate uh, barbecue in the south of U.S. or not. Uh, uh, no worries. Yeah. So I mean, repetitive. I, I, I know when you guys. Uh, I know when when you're on tour, especially when you're hitting that many shows in that period of time. Like, it all just freaking flies right by yeah can't even imagine which okay so before we dive into the specifically leprous stuff um how long have you been playing drums for i started when i was nine so that is almost nine 19 years ago holy cow man mm. dear lord so uh what what got you started into drums what was the the thing that made you want to start banging banging random cylindrical things <laughs> I had a lot of energy though, so um, that was kind of a natural way to get something out. Uh, but uh, I was just very fascinated about all the coordination stuff that you had to do and all the cool, very distinct sounds that came out of the different, different drums and uh, all the exciting pedals and everything that I saw. Saw the local school brass band uh, in my hometown uh, playing on. and. Um, yeah, uh, I guess it was just the energy and the rhythm and, yeah, the rhythm for sure. But, uh, yeah, it was a lot of stuff. Uh, but, but I started, like, air drumming and banging around on different stuff uh, way before I was nine years old. So so uh, it kind of felt pretty natural, I guess. Hell yeah. Hell mm. yeah, man. That's actually, um, since you were saying that, you know, you played air drums when you were younger and it felt pretty natural... I always played air guitar when I was younger, and it would always be very natural, but I'd always play it left-handed, you know? And that's why uh, I, I kind of screwed myself from the get-go. <laughs> but uh, either way, so any um, sure. any advice for younger drummers, especially, you know, having been on tour and having played in front of big crowds, small crowds, been with little bands, small, or little bands big bands, you know? What's your advice to them? 
Yeah, uh, to say uh, my advice to the typical 13 to 18 years old drummer, to say it like that, uh, is just uh, just go for it. Follow your dreams and uh, don't uh, listen to anyone, and especially not your parents. If they say, <laughs> <laughs> if they say, oh, you need a normal job, whatever. That that's the worst argument I hear, especially in Norway, because in Norway and Europe, it's probably the easiest continent to. It, it's not easy at all. But compared to Australia, for instance, where you have to fill it in Perth, you have to travel six hours at least if you want to play in another city. And we're so lucky in um, in Norway. And I guess it's even worse examples than Australia as well because you can get a lot of funding and stuff. I know uh, from there, but uh, just as an example, because in Norway you won't starve anyway. It's impossible. You cannot starve. You you uh, if you fail totally, you still have system around you, you, you that have some safety really nets good. yeah so just follow your dreams and passion and and work hard and um, be prepared to hit the wall a couple of times that oh. will always happen and that will lead to the better stuff in the end for sure absolutely absolutely so um who are some of your favorite drummers i've seen a couple of pictures of you and mike portnoy together on your instagram page yeah, yeah for sure he's uh, he's um He's um, the one, of course, uh, in the in the prog scene. Uh, but uh, Nicky McBrain, Phil oh, really? Collins, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, rock yeah, and roll, man. Uh, Phil Collins, uh, Gavin Harrison, kind of took the the prog thing to a more groove oriented thing for me. A lot of American gospel drummers, Aaron Spears, Chris Coleman, and I'm I'm actually gonna play on a drum festival in uh, South Korea with Chris Coleman. It's only gonna be me him and um, a Japanese very good drummer girl actually um, uh, and Calvin Rogers he's also the father of gospel drummer uh, drumming um, oh, beautiful and then that, that's some pretty intense hard-hitting extremely attitude uh, you know those players so uh, oh, yeah. yeah and also Steve Gadd <laughs> Uh, some Norwegian drummers, uh, Torsten Loftus, Kenneth Kapsta, they're from bands like Motor, Psycho, Shining, the Norwegian, Norwegian Shining. Uh, the ex-drummer of Leprous, he's an amazing drummer. He was also a big in inspiration for me and still is playing with Ishan and um, Norwegian Shining. He played with Leprous. Uh, yeah, uh, it is a lot of, uh, of drummers. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, it seems like you have a pretty... Pretty eclectic yeah. um, inspiration right there. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, Chris Dave, if you've heard about him. I have American, not. Uh, <laughs> American drummer who playing for, playing for D'Angelo, Adele, <laughs> stuff like that. But he's oh, most really? known, yeah, in the drumming scene, he's most known for the drum heads. He's uh, amazing mm. feel and uh, control over his timing and it's just beyond technique, so. He's amazing. Rock and roll. Rock and roll, man. Uh, so how did you wind up joining Leprous? Uh, I got to know Tobias, uh, the ex-drummer. That almost eight years ago now, actually, that I talked to him uh, when we went to the same music conservatory for a short little while. He had to stop going to that conservatory because he was going to tour with Leprous and Ishal uh, with Amorphis, actually. Um, but I said, hey, I love Leprous, so let me know if you ever need a step in. Because I was very much uh, in that kind of mood that, okay, I got to tell everyone that, hey, I'm here, American style. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, um, uh, yeah, uh, so and, and a few months later he said, hey, I have another tour with another band. I cannot do the Leprous thing. Do you want to step in six weeks? In Europe with Leprous and also join one week to Japan with Isha, and I did that, and that was um, yeah, that was my way into Leprous actually, and it was uh, hard, uh, t tough shoes to fill. Oh, absolutely. So, uh, so uh, yeah, uh, it made me. I had to push myself in uh, many different ways there. So I'm I'm happy I I got through it, and now I finally have some self confidence in. A band like that. <laughs> oh, dude, absolutely. You you deserve the confidence, man. I've, I mean, I've seen you play. I've heard you on the records. Like, yeah, you definitely do, dude. But um, so you guys you guys just finished recording the album not too long ago, right? New album? Uh, we're 40% done, so we're oh, not really? really. 
yeah, we, we just use uh, way longer time on each track this time. It's not like playing, uh, recording two songs a day on drums. It's more like one song a day and then maybe go back uh, weeks later and do uh, uh, do adjustments. Wow. All right. So you're really, really taking your time on this one. Yeah, uh, and not to make it like extremely technical or perfect. It's uh, more like an uh, artistic direction that it needs to be. Uh, yes. The correct uh, aesthetic, aesthetic. Yeah, aesthetic, no, aesthetic. Yeah. Aesthetic. yeah. So I'm Norwegian English for you there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's actually interesting. You bring that up. Um, what is the thought process on this one, as far as what what direction are you guys trying to head with this album? Ooh. Uh, I'm not the main songwriter though, but I can say, <clears throat> I can say that um, it's uh, it's gonna be different for sure. And uh, lots of the def uh, le um, the Lepers albums are very different, but this one is gonna be very different in 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 some ways. Um, more kind of, I would say, from a rhythmic point of view, more funky in in, in some nice. ways. Nice. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. In a modern, more electronic way, and it doesn't mean that it will be electronic program drums all the time, but it's uh, it's more like uh, almost some hip hop, trip hop vibes here and there. Really, I've I've, so, only, I've only recently yeah. been diving a little bit further into those like subgenres and stuff. So yeah, I'm, I'm very very interested to hear how this is going to turn out, man. Yeah, um, and um, and and what can I say? Um, Less prog for the sake of it, but it will still be pretty intense, weird rhythms. Uh, and Einar, the main composer, he he still fascinates me a lot on how weird all his rhythmic, rhythmical phrasings uh, uh, is when he makes music, and it's a very interesting thing to work with. You said Einar's. Uh, you said Einar's the main composer. Yeah. Oh, rock and roll. Which, by the way, tell that man I love his voice. I love yeah, his voice well, so much. <laughs> <laughs> but I will. either way all right man uh, is there anything you want to plug before we before we wrap it up here Ooh, check out my other band round of a point we're gonna release a new record may 24th already released a single so uh that's a pretty cool band as well rendezvous point Pua, as they say Pua. in french Pua. yeah rendezvous is a french word actually so rock, and roll. rock and roll brother yeah. thank you so much for joining me man Thank you so much. All right. Rock on. <laughs>